Hunt on Takir was in 1979. He says two smaller eruptions occurred in 1991 and 2007. Another expert said the eruption triggered a rapid flow of rocks and ash known as a pyroclastic flow. The video footage indicates that a pyroclastic flow took place. But when I take a closer look, I get the impression the temperature was relatively low. Aramaki says the temperature indicates that magma did not rise close to the surface. He also explained that a pyroclastic flow can occur even without the release of magma when hot volcanic gas causes a lava dome to collapse. A third expert says officials at the meteorological agency monitored very small earthquakes near the surface. But he says it's difficult to foresee a disaster because small earthquakes do not necessarily lead to volcanic eruptions. Seismic activity in the area has accelerated since September 10th, but this activity was not so violent. The scale of the earthquakes was small and they were becoming fewer and fewer. So I can't say whether this seismic activity was a sign of an imminent eruption. People who live around the mountain need to be on high alert. Farmers living at the foot of Mount Ontake are assessing the damage after ash fell on their crops. They say it's been found on 18 hectares of Chinese cabbage. Farmers in the town of Kiso have been busy cutting and washing cabbage covered by ash. I don't exactly know how buyers will react, but I think it's going to hurt. Officials plan to conduct detailed surveys in Kiso and other parts of the prefecture. A Chinese TV broadcaster says authorities have charged two people with trying to smuggle hundreds of new smartphones into the country. The TV station reports that a Chinese and a Japanese arrived from Tokyo at Shanghai Airport with 453 iPhone 6 handsets. The broadcaster says the phones are worth a total of more than $320,000. The report says the pair tried to pass through customs without declaring the phones. Authorities suspect the pair tried to avoid paying about $55,000 in duties. iPhone 6 models aren't yet on sale in mainland China. Some people are buying them abroad and reselling them in the country at high prices. Chinese media say there have been six similar cases at the Shanghai airport alone. Relatives of Japanese nationals abducted by North Korea are hoping for significant progress in the next round of talks. They're urging the Japanese government to press the North for the immediate return of all abductees. Senior government officials from Japan and North Korea are scheduled to meet in the Chinese city of Shenyang on Monday. Relatives of the abductees gathered in Saitama City, north of Tokyo, on Saturday. Shigeo Izuka said recent developments have been cause for concern. His younger sister, Yaiko Taguchi, was abducted to the north in 1978. The Japanese government should not give in to the north. I strongly believe the government should take the initiative in the negotiations. Sakia Yokota, whose daughter Megumi was abducted, also called on Japan to take a firm stance. The abduction issue is a result of a crime committed by a nation. I would like the Japanese people and the government to bear this in mind. Yokota asked the Japanese government not to mix different humanitarian issues during talks with North Korea. She urged officials to negotiate for the immediate return of all abductees. Takashi Fujita also took part in the gathering. His brother Susumu disappeared in 1976. Police say they cannot rule out the possibility that Susumu was abducted by North Korean agents. I'd like Japanese people to share our feelings. We can't just forget this abduction issue. Fujita called for increased public support to bring the abductees home. A pioneering Japanese politician has died. Takako Doi was the first female speaker of the lower house. She died of pneumonia on September 20th. She was 85. Doi began her career as a university lecturer on constitutional law. She was first elected to the lower house in 1969 and was re-elected 11 times. 
Doi became leader of the Social Democratic Party in 1986. Doi led an election campaign against the consumption tax in the 1989 Upper House election. That caused the ruling Liberal Democratic Party to lose its majority. Her popularity continued in the 1990 Lower House election, and her party won more seats. When the coalition government of Prime Minister Morihiro Hosokawa took power in 1993, Doi became the first female Lower House Speaker. But the party suffered a setback in nationwide local elections the following year. Doi stepped down as party leader to take responsibility. Now here's your three-day world weather forecast. That's all for this edition of Newsline. We'll be back with more news at the top of the hour. I'm Kaneko Sackner in Tokyo. Thanks very much for joining us. covers outdoor kawaii and all the fun that goes with it. In Japan, there's a big group of mountain girls who enjoy hiking in style. We'll show you their girly hiking outfits with kawaii leggings and skirts. At outdoor music festivals, there's a certain kind of fashion that's followed, like head wreaths and super stylish rain boots. Plus, we'll tell you all about girls' camps, a girls-only twist on camping in the great outdoors. We'll take you on a fairy tale themed camp that's super kawaii. And in kawaii around the world, we'll meet a mother-daughter pair in Canada who love kawaii fashion. We've also got Tokyo Photo Book and other favorites in 49 fun-packed minutes. Let's go!